Welcome to Thursday afternoon and another warm one out there, but with a wind advisory through this evening. We'll talk more about winds of change and what it means for your weekend coming up. Paula. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, sign of the times. We'll take you behind these signs that have been popping up all over the village of Chelsea addressing Muslims and refugees. Sandra. All right, Paula, also a rock and roll star just performed in Detroit and is found dead this morning. We have new information on what happened inside his hotel room. But at first, terror in Times Square, a car crashes through a crowd, killing at least one person. And at this hour, we've just learned that victim is from Michigan. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we start today at four with that tragic story out of New York. We've just learned there is a Michigan connection to this chaos in Times Square. A driver speeding the wrong way plowed into nearly two dozen people. A young woman was killed, 22 others hurt after a 26 year old driver slammed into people walking along the sidewalk. Police say that driver is a former member of the U.S. Navy and also has two prior arrests for driving while intoxicated. Police are now investigating. And we have just confirmed a young woman from Michigan is the victim who died in this crash. Her name is Alyssa Elsman. She lived in Portage, Michigan. That's near Kalamazoo. According to her social media accounts, the photos there showed from her trip back to New York. NBC reporting her sister, her youngest, younger sister, is among those injured. And witnesses say it was an absolutely terrifying scene. Travel was flying everywhere. I got hit by a piece. Uh, the car landed sideways. Uh, I saw a gentleman underneath the car and another gentleman was pulling him out and it was a real mess and then I looked up to the front of the car and I saw the flames and I'm like I got to get my kids out of here. The mayor of New York City now saying there is no indication this was an act of terrorism. Of course, we're going to share more information as we get it. Also today, first at four, it has been hot and very windy all day today. Wind gusts hitting 40 miles an hour in some areas. Andrew Humphrey tracking the wind for us and also chances for rain. Andrew, what's the latest? Well, Sandra, that wind advisory is still in effect for Detroit and all of Southeast Michigan, not just the Motor City, until eight o'clock this evening. Got wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour Per, per hour that can be damaging and it can be tough to drive too, especially if you have a truck or SUV or big rig. So be careful out there on the roads. Any stoplights that are out because of the high winds, make sure you treat them as four way stops during the afternoon rush hour and until those lights are working. You got a couple of lines of showers trying to pop up here. You can see some shower and storm activity toward Fort Wayne, Indiana, just south of the Ohio border. Not much here in southeast Michigan yet, except for so far, just some billowing clouds. Second line here back to, toward uh, Milwaukee will continue to grow inside in size and make its way toward our area. So temperatures are in the 80s right now, 88 degrees down to 80 over the next couple of hours. But we've got to watch out for some scattered showers and storms. More on the, that and your weekend forecast coming up, Sandra. Thank you, Andrew. We're also following the tragic death of famous rock singer Chris Cornell, who was found dead in Detroit after a concert last night. Cornell, as you may know, was considered a cornerstone of Seattle's grunge rock movement. Most recently, fans know him as the lead singer of Soundgarden. Last night, he performed at the Fox Theater in what would end up being his final show. Cornell was found shortly after midnight in his MGM Grand Hotel room. He was unconscious. He was found on the bathroom floor. The medical examiner ruled his death suicide by hanging. He was 52 years old. In Sterling Heights, one person is dead, three others hurt after an apartment catches fire. 33-year-old Laura Ann Phillips was the only resident killed in that fire. Another was injured. Two firefighters were also hurt. It started in one corner of the building overnight when many of the residents were asleep. Investigators believe the complex didn't have any working fire detectors or firewalls. The fire spread pretty quickly. It destroyed 16 apartments altogether. It was so bad. We. It it is like in a matter of minutes, the whole thing just, it just went up, it went up. I hope it won't open right in there, but it was, it was bad. It was the worst fire I've ever seen. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. 
One of the most influential men in politics, television, and American culture has died. Former Fox News boss Roger Ailes was 77 years old. Ailes built the Fox News network pretty much from scratch and turned the company into a cable powerhouse. He first made his mark back in the 60s, helping Richard Nixon use television more effectively. Ailes started working at Fox in 1996. He was pushed out last year during a sexual harassment scandal. So far, no word on an exact cause of death. President Trump has turned to Twitter to slam the Justice Department's decision to appoint a special prosecutor to lead the Russia investigation. This morning he called the investigation the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. Devin has been following this story for us from the newsroom. And Devin, how is Washington reacting to the appointment now of a special counsel? Well, Sandra, today both the Republicans and Democrats have been voicing their support for Robert Mueller, the former FBI director who's been chosen to head up the investigation into Russia's election tampering and possible ties to the Trump campaign. The appointment of Mueller comes uh, as a New York Times report raises new questions about fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Uh, the Times claims Flynn told Trump's transition team weeks before the inauguration that he was already under federal investigation for secretly working as a paid lobbyist for the nation of Turkey. Uh, but the president hired him in anyway. Today, uh, in a rare moment of bipartisanship, both parties spoke in support of Mueller and his appointment. The whole point is to have an independent investigation and follow the facts wherever they may lead. It is, it is premature to prejudge anything at this point. If the president has nothing to hide, then he and the Republicans in Congress should welcome independent investigations to remove all doubt of a cover-up. The American people have a right to know the truth. Now, even with Mueller's appointment, the House and Senate Intelligence Committees are still going to go forward with their own investigations into uh, Russia and the election. This afternoon, the full Senate is also going to hear from Deputy Attorney General uh, Rosenstein about what he knows about that meeting. That is going to be uh, behind closed doors, however. That's still to come today. So, Sandra, uh, the beginning of what could be a very long investigation. In fact, some uh, say this could last into the years rather than months. Back yeah, to you. Yeah, just the beginning indeed. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Devin. One act of vandalism has actually spread a feeling of togetherness for many neighbors in a small village in Washtenaw County, and they're not afraid to show it. Paula Tupman stumbled onto these signs popping up in different neighborhoods. She wondered, what's the story behind those signs? So she started asking some questions. She joins us live now from Chelsea. And Paula, what's going on? Well, the signs have actually been popping up for a while, and they say one human family, we support refugees and our Muslim neighbors. You'll notice this particular sign has been vandalized, but the owner believes the fact that it is still standing, even like that, is a testament and something against division. We were out of town for um, uh, vacation, and it had gotten torn and thrown, and our neighbor picked it up, taped it up, and put it right back in. Mandy Higgins was an early adopter. When a rainbow unity flag was vandalized in the community last year, she and her neighbors were furious and decided to take a stand. We might not have racial diversity, but we ha we're welcoming. We're right outside of Ann Arbor. We have a lot of economic diversity, and it's a great community. The message is spread throughout Chelsea. You could say a sign of the times. Silent but potent messages against hate, division, segregation, bigotry, and not just signs, but flags, unity flags, a human rights flag, and nestled between them, the most important flag of all, the United States of America flag. Keyword, united. And you turn the corner and there's a flag and a sign, a flag and a sign, a flag and a sign, and it just kind of goes down the street and works its way up, and I think it's great. And what's great, if you'll notice on my sign, somebody went around on all the signs and put a little heart. I did notice that. It's very anonymous. Oh, but just, that's not part of the sign? Mm -mm. That's another somebody in the community. Every time a new sign went up, would put a heart on it. The global market in downtown Chelsea sells fair trade goods from around the globe. Everything has a story. And it has become the beacon for those who want the signs. People are giving, I think, different amounts. I've had people give me $5 for one. Um, but as I said, if um, there we're we're giving them out even without a donation. Donations go to the Interfaith Council for Peace and Justice and the Interfaith Roundtable of Washtenaw County. Not everyone likes the signs. A business owner off Maine and off camera was less than enthusiastic about the signs, the flags, and what they stand for. I'm sorry, we're divided. 
but I'm glad to live in a town that will have these signs and, and a lot of people um, will put them out in their yards and take that risk. And you know what really does hearten the, the residents, the neighbors, and the business owners who do like these signs is that they are migrating out of Chelsea and into some of the rural areas. And Sandra, again, take a look at this sign. It may have been torn, but it's no longer divided. Sandra? Yeah, it's a very strong message. All right, thank you so much, Paula. Here in downtown Detroit, American Coney Island celebrating its 100th anniversary. The celebration started this morning at 9 and it is set to go all the way until 9 tonight. And as part of the big day, the restaurant has special deals on Coney's, a number of giveaways, and also lots of live entertainment as well. Proceeds from today will benefit both the Detroit Firemen's Benevolent Fund and the Detroit Police Fund as well. Still ahead, do you have a rainy day fund for those financial emergencies? Coming up, new numbers show it's pouring for way too many Americans. Plus, also ahead, do not adjust your television. That is snow. Yes, in mid-May, we're going to tell you who's shivering right now and also an update on your forecasts. But up first, gay rights activists outraged. Two gay men facing a very public and painful punishment. News from around the world coming up next. Whatever. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Illegal dumpers targeting this Detroit neighborhood. Just take a look at the huge mess that was left behind. We'll show you how you can stop illegal dumpers in their tracks. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines around the world today and across the country. We begin in Indonesia. That's where a Sharia court has sentenced two gay men to a public caning. The men are 20 and 23 years old. They were arrested by vigilantes in their own conservative community. They were found guilty of violating the region's strict Islamic laws and sentenced to receive 85 lashes. Gay sex is legal in the rest of Indonesia, except for that conservative area. Gay activists have condemned this sentencing. They're also hoping Indonesia's president will try to intervene. Now moving on to Spain, where police say a rescue dog helped find an Algerian migrant worker who was trapped inside some industrial tubing. He had apparently stowed away in a pipe on the back of a truck trying to reach a port. The pipe was only 15 inches in diameter. Well, police say the dog, the dog is Tango, has sniffed out 1,700 workers hiding in trucks and other spots during his eight years working on the force. Well, you know, it feels like summer here in Detroit and we are enjoying it, but take a look at this here. It looks like winter in Montana. Look at what they woke up to this morning here. A blanket of snow covering the roads. This is in the western portion of Montana. The forecast there called for four inches in the valley and up to eight inches in the mountains. Temperatures there well below average, but expected to warm up there pretty soon. <laughs> My goodness, we have absolutely nothing to complain about. Right. If you want to think some cool thoughts, just look at those pictures. Exactly. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous out. Oh, isn't it, Sandra? You're absolutely right. We have summer-like feelings uh, around here once again with temperatures that are in the 80s and plenty of sunshine. But it is windy. Still, we have a wind advisory in effect until 8 o'clock this evening. We've got wind gusts, folks, up to around 40, even 50 miles per hour, depending on where you are. Where you are. And that can be damaging, believe it or not. I mean, we've had to deal with high winds before, so you know what to do. Take it easy out there on the the roads, both hands on the steering wheel. If any traffic lights are out, make sure you treat those as four way stops. If today was trash day, go ahead and get those garbage cans before they start rolling down the street. Not much in the way of showers and thunderstorms around here yet. You got a line just down here to our south in Ohio and Indiana. I think this scoots off to the east. There might be some scattered shower development between now and about uh, 530 right here in Detroit and southeast Michigan. But I'm watching this line right here, the second one back to, Mil to uh, Milwaukee, northwestern portions of the lower peninsula. As is gets its act together, it might provide a second wave. If there's a first wave this afternoon, a second wave of shower and thunderstorm activity that will be scattered and a line that moves across later this evening, closer to around 6 p.m. and afterward. Tonight, after a cold front moves through, Look at how much lower those temperatures go. That's right. We'll see 40s overnight in some places, including here in the metro zone off to our south and west as well. In our south zone south of 94, low temperatures overnight down to 50 degrees in Dundee. Yeah, get those heaters cranking again. Temps down to about 45 degrees for our friends over in Brighton. So chilly and crisp air is on the way after we see any shower or thunderstorm activity this evening and after a cold front moves through low and middle 40s in our north zone. 
but enjoy the warm weather for now. We're looking at partly sunny skies. Look at how hot it is. 88 degrees, just about as hot as yesterday. Visibility is looking good so far, but there are those winds sustained at around 30 miles per hour. 91 once again. These are almost the same as temperatures from yesterday at this time. 86 for our friends in Pontiac. 84 right now around uh, Howell and around Brighton. Well, it's 85 in Dundee and for our friends in Monroe, also very warm at around 85 degrees. Here's how high those winds are. You can see in these areas of red right here. This is where some of the highest wind speeds are being recorded. Metro Airport out to Mount Clemens and look at how high these wind gusts are around 40 miles per hour or greater. And again, that advisory does not end until 8 o'clock this evening. And here are some of those cooler conditions on the way too. instead of 80s for tomorrow. Count on temperatures being in the 50s most of the day. Cold front breezes through, cooler, less humid air moves in, but you can see to our west, more shower and thunderstorm activity that is poised to make it in here for at least part of our weekend coming up. But let's talk about this evening, shall we? Continued windy, scattered showers and storms that will be here and there anywhere between 5 p.m. and maybe 10 o'clock later on tonight before it clears out once again. Slowly temperatures down to 51 degrees, much chillier than the previous nights. 62 for a high tomorrow might need your jackets in the morning and cooler in the afternoon than now by a good 20 to 30 degrees. 69 degrees on Saturday, Sandra, with some sunshine coming back, but another chance of rain is possible, especially goes as we go into Monday, excuse me, Sunday into Monday and next week. No 80s, but 60s, a little more spring like, but still feeling like May. Back over to you. All right, thank you, Andrew. Still ahead here first at four, how social media might turn one big cat, this big cat, into a world famous feline. And wait until you hear what this big guy eats. Also, would you have enough money to face a financial emergency? We're gonna reveal how little it takes to really push many Americans into debt. But first, we have a programming note for you today. Don't forget to watch the Preakness coming up this Saturday, starting at 5 on Local 4. See what happens at the second leg of the Triple Crown. It's coming up this weekend. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In today's trending stories, we are talking about money. A new survey finds many Americans aren't really ready to handle a financial emergency. Four out of five people polled say they couldn't afford a surprise bill of $1,000 for something like a home repair or a medical emergency. Almost half say $100 for a parking ticket or even a minor car repair would put them in debt. One bright spot, though, 61% said they do expect to make more money in a few years. But it's also another important reminder, try to put a little money away for a rainy day. Well, you may have heard about this. Fans of Saturday Night Live will be saying goodbye to Bobby Moynihan. CNN now reporting the comedian leaving for a new series on another network. Moynihan has been with SNL now for nine years, best known for his drunk uncle character and also playing Governor Chris Christie. This week, by the way, is the season finale. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the guest host. Musical guest Katy Perry. That's coming up Saturday night after our 11 o'clock news right here on Local 4. And the Guinness Book of World Records taking a closer look at this cat because he might just set a new world record. Omar is a Maine Coon cat living in Melbourne, Australia. His owners put a photo of him on Instagram and that's when the Guinness people contacted them. Take a look at this. Omar is 47 inches long and he weighs 30 pounds. The current record holder is just a measly 46 and a half inches. Guinness still has to confirm everything though. You might wonder, what are they feeding Omar? Well, they say kangaroo meat and also kibble. That is one big cat. Big or small, we know many of you love your pets, and that's why Click on Detroit has the All for Pets page. It's one-stop shopping for everything pet-related. Don't forget to check it out on our website. Still ahead, how about a little fire with your next haircut? This is allegedly a hot new trend, pun intended. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Cipriano case made national headlines. A son murders his father with a baseball bat and beats his mother and brother. They survive. Now, for the first time, Rose Cipriano breaks her silence. There's so much internal struggles going on daily. This was Sal after the attack. Now, see his remarkable recovery. He's by far the, the strongest uh, patient I'll ever meet. No doubt. I'll take you to the brain center where this family is healing and gaining strength and ready to talk. When I wake up every day, it's I have to make a choice. Where do we go with this, positive or negative? The Cipriano's exclusive tonight at 11. Right now, it's